This segment is brought to you by Jigmaster Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and use promo code PNF20 and save 20% off your next jig order today. Welcome to the Paddle and Fin Podcast Network. This is the final cast segment with your hosts, Brad Hicks and Josh Eldridge, where we cast our final opinions on all products, good and bad. Welcome to the final cast. Welcome back to the final cast on the Paddle and Fin Network. I'm your host, Josh, and I'm joined with Brad. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Steve. (laughs) No, it's Jimmy. What's up? I came back. I missed one episode. (laughs) Um, So we got on tonight and we decided that we wanted to talk about our favorite products from 2020. Um, These aren't necessarily new products for 2020. These were products that were new to us in 2020. So me, Brad and Jimmy will share a few of our favorite things and, uh, um, you know, give our input, what we liked about it, uh, any cons that we, you know, anything we didn't like about it. And I think we'll be wrapping up next week. will be the last one for the, well, is it? Let me think. Yeah. Yeah. Next week. Yeah. Yeah. It would be next week would be the last one for the season and then we'll start back up in uh, early January. So we'll do our little Christmas break. Hopefully maybe we'll even throw a a funny after hours. That's where our funniest after hours came from. I think before it was over where we had been recording and everybody had been like, hang out the families and we'd be like, all right, who wants to join after hours? And then everybody's like, yeah, I've been out all night. This is going to be great. So well, you guys did the secret Santa episode too last year. Yeah. yeah. We got to do was... that again. I'm going to jump in on it this year. Did you not do it last year? No. Like, Brad's too cheap, dude. Haven't you I mean, learned was, anything was, by being dude, I was poor last year, man? You're still <laughs> poor. <laughs> We're all poor. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. ain't none of us rich, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. I mean, the way you turn over kayaks, you look like you got like you know a secret <laughs> kayak <laughs> on stashed. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna I don't know. episode. He's gonna have bands, you know, <laughs> a couple <of> grand. <laughs> that, that should be my background, just stacks of money <laughs> <laughs> hidden in the wall like a coke dealer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, Brad, you want to start us out, bro? Yeah, sure. So I, I'm pre- I'm sure you guys will both actually agree with me, but my first one here I had for 2020 that I liked is the Yak Gadget Crate. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, that I, crate. It. I'm so happy it's so good, but I spent so much time, like, you know, I tried the black packs and stuff like that, and the wilderness crate which is really good and then i went the diy made a crate Mm -hmm. converted the toolbox and then i finally decided to go crateless and as soon as i got my crateless system down john got me one of those crates (laughs) and i was like crap (laughs) yeah i don't leave without it i was kind of the same way because well i went from like ghetto like crate to Black pack. I hated the black pack, by the way. I'm sorry. If some of you guys have it out there, I hate the thing. Sorry. My boxes didn't fit in it. But got the got the Yak Gadget crate. I had uh, the problem with it fitting in my Bonafide at first because he didn't have the feet risers. But figured something out to where it fit. I put uh, two rod holders on one side instead of one on each side. And that gave me, you know, the room for it to fit in there. Pretty sweet. Yeah, I... um. I, I liked my black pack. Um, the black pack worked really well. The best kayak that it was in was actually in my Kilroy HD because of the, the style of the area. There's no bungee system. And I tried to get some ideas. I bought Justin's, one of Justin's old bungee systems from his Jackson. It kind of had it like rigged up, but dude, it was, it looked sloppy. It looked 
just messy. And I ended up buying two Yak Attack like tie, vertical tie down holders. And I bought these little Sims like fly rod holders that go on backpacks. They're like 10 bucks. You can get two of them. And dude, I pinned that thing down and it worked flawless. Like the only thing I really disliked about the black pack was just how kind of tight everything was. It was hard mm-hmm. to get stuff out of it. Like I, 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 I packed it up good and it fit my tackle boxes. But when you go to remove one, it's like, I got to remove like two or oh, three. Man. Of them. Yeah. But I mean, at the same time, that's kind of on me because all my tackle, bo- tackle boxes are different sizes. I don't have like a uniform, <laughs> like set up, yeah. like, you know, everything's kind of pieced together. I've got like two like you know like two bigger boxes two medium boxes and then two small boxes and then a freaking like spinnerbait box yeah know? so it was well, like we're... playing tetris inside that thing <laughs> oh yeah we, we were talking about this yesterday because jimmy posted his uh tackle stores that he uh came up with recently oh the one he, my... he's like yeah you have like 15 tackle boxes I'm like dude i own like three tackle boxes but <laughs> There, I have there two of them are thirty seven hundreds. One's a Plano Edge jig box, so I had a hard time getting the Edge box out when all the other boxes were in there. So I have like four tackle boxes total. Yeah. What's funny is the boxes you're talking about. That's just bulk storage. So all those boxes is like extra baits, and then I've got four thirty six. I carry thirty six hundreds in the mm-hmm. kayak, no matter which boat I'm in. I carry. 3600s, a 3700 terminal box if I'm in the F12, and then a 34 or 35, one of the tiny boxes in the Flint. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but no, my least favorite thing with the black pack, the original black packs, the damn lid. Yeah. Yeah. The best thing that happened was I don't know how their whole deal with New Canoe and Yak Attack went, but New Canoe's version was shorter, so it would clear the swivel seat on the, their mm-hmm. boats. And it had hinges on it. Yeah, I and was about to say I, I the, bought some of those. Yeah, I bought some those of those hinges. hinges and put them yeah, on you could buy bag. those hinges se- separate. So I think Brian did that to his too and yeah. loved it. So I don't, I don't know why that wasn't a like you, something opens it needs hinges. That's kind of just how stuff works. Yeah, know? and it stays up in in its place when you have it open. Right. Yeah, yeah. that little bungee system they had for the black pack. Nah. Um, my big I thing I, I liked about the Yak Gadget box was that it fit a Jackson rear tank well. Like, my yeah. black pack, no matter what I did, like, it would never fit, like, cleanly. Um, it did, like, if I turned it, like, I, I'd almost say vertical, like, where it's, like, skinny, but longer, going towards the back side, back of the boat. But with the Yak Gadget, when I put that in, it didn't fit either, though, because it's got, what, how many rod holders is it coming with? Like six. the HD1-6. Yeah. So if I put the, the rod holders just vertical, it wouldn't fit in there still. Mm-hmm. So I just turned them um, slightly side or not slightly at an angle and re-drilled mm-hmm. holes in it and then put it in like that. I think fits perfect. I was like yeah. so stoked, dude. Like I was like, finally. <laughs> finally something fits back here you know because yeah. besides i mean i put a milk crate but then you know i'm sitting there messing with a milk crate fi- figuring out how can i pin it down you know and have it secure and it's not sliding around back there because i remember my first one it was so obnoxious dude like you know having that yeah. thing the way i mean i had it pinned down but it still moved around a lot so but definitely I've a good seen, product choice yeah, I've seen some guys using uh, metal eyelets on the side of their uh, Yak Gadget crates, and they'll, they'll use like this little buckle, and then they'll buckle it to uh, Yak Attack eyelets on a gear track in the back. I'm like, that's yeah. a good idea. I'm going to yeah. start doing that. But yeah, overall, the box is awesome. It fits the Calcos Battle Box nicely, which that's another product that I should have thrown on my list. It's honorable mention. That's, that's a good box. So big. It, 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 it's a little bit. It's a little bit thicker than a regular box, but it's not it's not hateful, I guess. I just feel like if I used it for what it's worth, it's going to weigh like 20 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can throw some like Dude. wicked weights, mortar bombs in there and stuff. It'd probably get pretty heavy. Mm. That would be, would be nuts. What about you, Josh? What's one of yours? Um... I'll go ahead and start out by beating the dead horse with the wicked weights, wicked willow, 
underspin. Um, Ryan, I, so happy yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, we've talked about it, so I'm not going to go into depth about it because we've talked about it so much. But um, I really, I'm a huge Kai Tech swim bait person. I love throwing a three eights and their three aught one with you know being a one one eighth. I think I don't think yeah. they have one bigger, but uh, not in a three aught. But anyways, it they had a three sixteenths also. So. I got to throwing that and I had thrown underspins before. And the ones that I was buying, cause I really like to buy good hooks. So like when I'm buying hooks, I'm looking at like, you know, owner or trocar or whatever, just quality ones. And I was buying an owner one and it was called like this flashy swimmer or whatever. And it had that wire style and it stuck down like two and a half inches down below the bait. And I kept getting like short strokes strikes on it all the time and i think uh, a lot of times when i would be throwing it would be when it was muddy you know mm-hmm. so i think they were keying in on that vibration of that blade but they would hit the blade and not the bait still um and then when i started throwing the underspin i was getting like you know good co- you know contact with you know on the hook on the plastic, not just snips at the, you know, at that blade. So, mm-hmm. and I just kind of liked it too. It was a unique, it doesn't spin normal, you know, like you would think like a spinner bait does it kind of mm-hmm. almost shoots back and forth sometimes too. When you slow it down, it's like an erratic and, motion. Yeah, yeah. And I'm a really big fan of baits that can be, um, uh, fish like at different, like, you know, water column basically. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that thing, you can swim it like you can drag it on the bottom. And I think that that blade hitting the ground makes a weird noise for the fish. I think, you know, you can obviously where it's kind of designed for us through, you know, your middle middle column. And then did you, if you burn it fast enough, you can skim the surface with it, you know. So um, I was just a big fan of it. Uh, it's they're you know, they're pricey because it's tungsten. Mm-hmm. But um, I had a hard time losing them. Like they don't mm-hmm. snag up real easy. Um, the shape of the actual uh, tungsten, you know, does pretty good. So it kind of comes through the rocks fairly easy. It comes through vegetation easy. It doesn't build up a bunch of shit on it. Even like when you're going through the nice, good, green, slimy shit that, you know, that likes to bind up on, you know, spinner blades and, mm-hmm. you know, swivels and that stuff, it, it, it gets it, but it's not real severe a lot of times. It's fairly easy to clean off, so... So th- three things on that real quick. One, if you're not throwing the wicked willow, you're wrong. I've said it before. I'll say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Two, I've lost so many of those stupid things just from casting them off because I'm an idiot. And then retire, retire, retire. Yeah. Yeah. And then three, like you, like like you said, uh, throwing it on top water and then you killing it. Man, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. Something that I've know that I like about it is you can run it too fast and it'll get kind of die. Yeah. And, but like you said, how it doesn't have a normal like, flutter with the blade. But I like that because it lets you know, okay, slow down. Like mm-hmm. you're obviously fishing too fast. Yeah. I don't know if it's my favorite. I definitely like it, but I've just have had a lot of success with the Strike King. Uh, their regular old lead underspin. I can't even remember what they call theirs, but. It's mm. definitely, I, I keep making myself throw it more. And it does, like, it's almost, like, I've used both of them in one day just because the actions are different. You know, it's it's definitely a killer bait, though. I like it. Yeah. I just like how close that blade is to, Me too. you know, the entire, like, you know, rig itself. So. You guys ever try, or you ever think about uh, taking off the willow and putting, like, a Colorado blade instead? Yeah. I actually looked at that today. I don't yeah. know that you have the spacing for it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. because of how short and stubby, like and like the width of that blade is occurring right off the mm-hmm. bat. You know, and I'm wondering if that would just kind of make too much contact with the bottom of the bait tool. I don't know though. I mean, the willow I'm, does too. Like you'll see it go up and slap up against it. But yeah, I uh, I, I want to try it. I looked at. I've got some of the. Um, they're like. 16th ounce that may be smaller spinner baits that are like in like the crappie section yeah and one of them's got a colorado blade on it that's 
I mean, probably really tiny dime or smaller than that. I mean, it's tiny. And I thought about trying to, cause it's gold. That's, a good idea. That's one thing I would like to see if they listen to this is I would love to see either an option to get gold blades from them so that you get the right size and everything or them to come out with gold blades on them. Yeah. I think they, I think they did do something like that this year. I thought I saw it. So I'll have to check. I don't know. But uh, I, the other thing I was going to mention, uh, Chris Yalk, he throws his big Joshy swim baits on the 3 0, like a 325 or a 375, mm-hmm. whatever size it is. And mm-hmm. it works really well. I'm like, that's good to know because I love the big Joshy swim bait. What size do y'all throw right now on your Wicked Willis? Uh, I have three odd and four odds. Um, so if I'm throwing like, you know, a four inch bait, I'll put it on a four odd. And then. If I'm throwing three eight or below, I'll do on a three aught. And then if I'm throwing like a really small swim bait, usually I'm probably just going to throw like just a standard lead. I, you know, I don't have anything mm-hmm. set up for like under spins that are really, really small like that. So, I, or I'm, baits that are. So, I'm going to send y'all some of them when they come in. I bought extra and I don't know if y'all seen them. Are the Mega Bass Okashira screw heads. So uh-uh. it's got, it's got a basically like the prop off of a spy bait. <clears throat> So it's a it's a one of Mega Bass's really detailed jig heads, that prop, a screw lock, and a hook, and it's like they do an eighth and a sixteenth, and they're tiny. Huh. Yeah. But they uh, they're supposedly smallmouth killers, and you yeah. put like a little two eight swim bait on it, and I finally found some footage of somebody running the because there's two versions, one with and one without the blade. I found a video of the one with the blade running through the water, and it's it's. Like in between a spinner bait and a chatter bait, like it actually makes a clacking noise that's kind of faint, but it also wobbles. Huh. It's, I and like they must be hot right now because it I had to go to three different websites to get different sizes and stuff. Like, jeez, I gotta you gotta send me that. I want to see what it see what it is. Yeah, I that's ordered I ordered extra because I was figuring for our you know the dirty Santa or whatever. But yeah. If, that doesn't end up happening for some reason. I'll just send them to y'all. Or I'll still send y'all a couple of them. But they they look, and like you throw them on spinning line, spinning gear. Heck yeah. yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna have to try that. All right, oh. Jimmy, what's yours? It's actually on the wicked weight. Something that I tried uh, when I ordered my wicked willows was their tomahawk skipping weights. Oh yeah, that thing. I don't know. It's probably the shape. Obviously, even though you would think that it would get caught up, but. I've started using those when I'm fishing like heavy current, like in real skinny water where you got a lot of rock for it to catch up on. And it just does not hang up as much as hmm. a, any of my traditional like bullet shaped tungsten weights do. And uh, what, what are you throwing all, with those? Just Texas rig normally. Okay. Um, that, that's, you know, Texas rig crawl. I've tried it with a worm. It does the same. It's just when I'm in the creeks, I usually throw some kind of creature bait. But, uh, I think it's a. I think I grabbed their quarter ounce, maybe. I can't remember what yeah. size. Two sizes, but they they do skip good. I have used them for skipping docks and stuff like that. But I just I prefer to use it when I'm in the current. I throw it up above the rapid, and just let the rapid just wash it out. And I I bet you, hundred times I've done that. It's probably only got caught once. Huh. It just, I'm guessing <laughs> you uh you peg the weight too then. No. No. Oh. Huh. So I that like, that weight's dragging on the bottom and acting like a K- Carolina rig then in the right and then you know as it comes through the current it's gonna yeah dart dude everything. never thought about trying that that's you, you think <laughs> of why you use peg a pegged weight you would think heavy current pegged weight and yeah I, just, I don't know why I just didn't do it one day I was like I just want to see how it does just kind of freelancing and doing its thing and. That was actually the day I had my best smallmouth trip out here. It was not pegged that weight, a Texas rig three inch crawbait, and I just all day. It was killer. Nice. Yeah, th- those tomahawks caught my interest. I've been wanting to try those with some worms. The on only a thing lake. I like about them is that the paint came off pretty quick. But yeah. You think about where I'm throwing it, where compared yeah. to what, what people would do with it, it's kind of like part of that territory. So I'm not mad at them and saying like they do a terrible job in the coating to it. No, I just yeah. 
crap out of it. You you uh, know, they don't even have to paint those things. I really don't care what color the, my weights are, you know? I Probably the only thing I do colored is uh, the little I throw shaky heads. Yeah. If I worm, I like the head to be green. But I talked to Dan about it because I'm trying some new shaky head stuff. I'm trying. Mm-hmm. That's like that's going to be my goal this year is to figure that in the net rig out. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, dude. Ned Rig. I love it. <laughs> I want it, but I hate it. <laughs> but we'll see. 2021, that'll be... I'm going to try to put the Nico Rig down. And uh, yeah, that's something I've never thrown. Man. <laughs> I know we a lot of people have switched from the Ned Rig to the Nico Rig and like the Nico Rig a lot. So Chris Anderson. Yeah. <laughs> I, I throw both. So like, if I throw a wacky rig, it'll be... It's either a lightly weighted wacky hook or I'll throw a wacky rig and I'll weight the worm. And you know what makes it Nico is the position of the hook on the worm. Yeah. Yeah. So if I do that, if that's not working, then I'll take the band off, swap up how I'm doing it, turn the hook the other way, and then do Nico. But basically those two, it doesn't really matter which one. They're just that's like my bread and butter. And I kinda yeah. wanna just try something else. If it if it doesn't work for me, I'll go right back to it though, because it's you can always catch fish with it. Yeah, Nico rig. Yeah, that's my first. So, what's your second one, Brad? Well, we already talked about my second one, the Wicked Willow. So, I'll just jump to my third, since everybody already knows how I feel about the Wicked Willow. Uh, Third one here is Douglas Rods. (laughs) So I went over. I went out to Brian's, dude. I'm telling you, I went out to Brian's in August, and he let me. He let me use his LRS rod and uh, one of the Matrix rods. And ever since that trip out there, I, can't, I could not stop thinking about how lightweight that, that those rods are. It's ridiculous. Um, and the reason why I like it so much is because I, I, I get joint pain from work, you know. And about halfway through the day when I'm throwing like a chatterbait or something, my, my hand just like feels like it's crippled. So I'm just like hopefully cutting down the weight on one of these rods helps with my joint pain at least i'm getting old man it sucks <laughs> but yeah that's um that's my last one i guess and uh just really impressed with the weight and the action on them do you have yours yet not yet they're coming they'll be here thursday i think how many did you get five big money well yeah i got i got i i sold all my other rods and they're they're paying for most of you know yeah I'm about I, I, to do the same thing. I've I actually I hooked up with a guy that's been on the Dobbins team for nine years. That's like 20 minutes from my house. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was meeting him down in Madison to pick up a rod, and then we got talking, and we know a lot of the same people. And he was like, "Well, look, you know, because he's on the like Dobbins staff has different tiers, and like this dude is he's big enough in fishing. Like Skeeter sends him a new boat every year." And he doesn't mm-hmm. pay for it. Like, Jeez. pretty deep in. But he was like, I just, I replace all my rods every year. He's like, you know, I'll sell you this year's rods, and I didn't get to fish that much. So, like, I won't talk about numbers or anything like that, but I'm about to replace probably half of my rods and add probably five plus to it. Jeez, dude. Hopefully won't come out any money, and I'll move up from, like, I use the arrows, which is the second and third tier rods they have 100 mm-hmm. 100 to 180 dollar range and i'm gonna move up to the champion xps and champion extremes which are the 280 plus yeah the uh i heard a podcast or it was tackle talk podcast andrew hayes i i heard uh gene jensen on his show say that the champion extreme is the best rod ever made and that's why it's 400 dollars. like yeah. it's but he he brought me one and like you tried a dobbins and you talked about how that rod Based off its rating, it wasn't light enough. Yeah. He brought me a an extreme 742, which is a medium. Mm-hmm. And he handed me the rod with just the reel on it, and it felt kind of just kind of stiff. And I was like, this isn't, it's got not got enough tip for what I want. Yeah. He just took an empty hook and hooked the, a piece of a, a TRD. And when you'd hold the rod out, the tip would sag. Like huh. just adding a little bit of weight totally changed the rod. I was like, no, I'll take it. 
<laughs> I'll take yeah. it. See, that's how I felt about the LRS rod, too, because, I mean, that, that thing has a real... Well, I was using the, the medium light version, or the 610.3 FS or something. But, uh, yeah, that thing had a real fast tip. And then the other thing I really liked about those rods are the EVA, or, yeah, the EVA foam. Man, they're so comfortable. And then the, the way they have, like, the handle configured, it's just, like, the the majority of where you hold the rod is above the reel. And I like that most yeah. of the, most of the reels I have, they have a short part on the top and then a, a long bottom uh, below the reel. I think I like it above the reel better. Uh, you know, a lot of companies don't push that because of the, the way it changes the balance of the rod. Yeah. Cause you're way closer to the tip, blah, blah, blah. But that's, I'm more partial to cork and yeah. I'm get more, I like split handle, but he was showing me the benefits of that full handle cork. And just like you said, on that spinning rod, it put more material up above the reel seat, mm-hmm. and, you know, conformed to your grip, even, yeah. even cork. And it was, it was just really nice. Like you, you definitely, for anybody that doesn't spend money on rods, I think spending money on rods is definitely more important than spending money on the reel. I agree. Sure. I agree. Well, that's my list. So I know it's short, but whatever. Josh, we'll what's your second? With another one, then. Yeah, <laughs> I'll come up with something. Maybe we'll see. Um, I'm gonna have to say my Plano Edge jig box. Oh, I can't um, wait. Yeah. So, like, it's the only box that I have that's. <laughs> that's why I Everything else is like a dumpster fire, and that box still looks awesome. <laughs> um, it's just, it's the way everything is set up because I ended up buying a ton of Jigmaster jigs um, last year and, and even at the beginning of this year. And so, I mean, I had like, I don't know, like 30 to 40 of them just strictly from them. And because what I like to do is like when I buy them, I'll buy like two or three of the same color, same weight. Cause I have the ones that I like. So it's like, all right, I get three black and blue, three PBJ ones, three of this. And, you know, and I was like, when I got them all, I'm like, Oh my God, what the hell am I going to do with all these things? And then that box came out. Um, because I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I can't stand to run out of a bait and not have that same bait still mm-hmm. like color and everything, you know, especially if the fish are biting it and you're like, dude, I just lost the only one. And then you're like, oh, I'll just try this jig because it's slightly different, but it looks kind of the same. And then you're not getting bit. And then you're like, <laughs> yeah. So when I bought those and I put, you know, I, I piled them in that jig box, dude. I just was like, I'm like, dude, that's just money. It just, it holds a ton. Um, it looks good. It looks clean. Um, you know, I like the features that it has with the clear glass. You know, you can mm-hmm. see everything re- or the clear plastic. You can see everything real well. It's got that, that drying feature built into it. Um, I love the the little label thing on the side of it. You know, I mean, it's not huge. Like a lot of people like to be able to see it better. Um, it doesn't really bother me a little bit. I write funny shit on my tackle boxes or I put stickers on them anyways to identify them. Um, so I'll, like it didn't really bother me. Like, you know, this, cause I know I think I've heard some people talk about like, it's not enough writing surface or whatever, or it's not wide enough or whatever, but, Labeling. um, Right. It's like, yeah, you can fix that yourself, you know, but it like I wrote on it and it's gotten wet and it's not bled to where I can't read it or anything weird like that. So overall, it's it's a great box. You know, my biggest complaint with the box and it was more me than the box itself. But a lot of people like to be able, especially in the kayak fishing world, is like to be able to open and close stuff one handed. You know, that box is a little tricky to do it one handed. Um and it really just has to do with your hand placement, you know? So like if you, you know, north or south of the center line of that, it's not going to close right, you know? Um, but I don't know. Uh, it, to me, that's not like a deal breaker or anything like that. And I think it's a little tricky when you first get one and you haven't, you know, used one before. It's kind of weird, but it takes a little time to kind of get used to it. But once you get used to it, it's, it's fairly easy to use. I think the smaller ones are probably easier to do actually one handed than like the 3700s, yeah. obviously. But so, and we talked about that on that episode with uh, Chris yeah. Russell. 
And uh, he he did say the smaller boxes are a little bit easier because the the front lid's not as flimsy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was a good episode. Do you keep yeah. chatter in it? Do I what? Do you keep blade like chatter baits in it as well? Uh, no, because I ran I out of room. So I did, <laughs> and then like I wanted to put. I have like like three rows of jig master stuff and then i had a uh, a row of like random jigs that i had and so i put those i took the um chatter baits i don't throw. i this year was the first year that i kind of got into throwing chatter baits more and it was the first year i caught a fish on one on a jackhammer um i was buying the old original chatter bait and i was never a fan of it um i would ha- either have like issues with it kind of falling apart or mm-hmm. something just so I just kind of stopped buying it. And then I got into plastics and it was just like hard baits kind of took a back seat for a while. But this year Same. I kind of was like, you know what, dude, I'm going to kind of, I have all this tackle that I'm not using. Like let's commit a couple days here and there to just fish stuff I wasn't used to. And so when I bought like jackhammers and stuff, I don't, I don't have enough stuff, I guess, to kind of put in its own box. or And I had too many jigs to cram that shit in there. So I was like, yeah. and I, I have a smaller, like, 30, I don't know, like, almost like a, I don't even want to say it's a 3,600, probably even smaller than that, you know, um, box that I have uh, chatter baits and some other random jigs. And so. See, I had the edge box on my list, too, but then I took it off because I bought that in 2019. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, I bought I bought mine in 2019, but I didn't put it together until the beginning of this year. Like, yeah, it counts. It counts. So it's yeah. all good. Does it hold them pretty tight though? Yeah. yeah. That's was the one thing I wanted to know for sure. Is <clears throat> if I bang stuff around, I want to make sure that they stay in place. Yeah. So I'm gonna fill that thing up. It's so here's how it kind of goes though. So it 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 holds baits tight now say you're using a jig master's flipping jig right and you have the quarter the quarter ounce ones you can fit right next to each other Mm -hmm. but the next size up you're like i can they're three eighths right but you can kind of of the weight like as you kind of put this pushing against each other and then when you're up in the half for three quarter ounce you have to skip a spot Mm -hmm. because the heads are so wide that they don't fit next to each other so i mean i guess you could technically turn them sideways but then you're dealing with the hooks you know what i mean being like pressing right. into the sh- the skirt or something of it you're you know the bait next to it so um yeah. well, it's you know i got of- enough jigs part- in there that i think i'm good so. <laughs> jimmy i'm gonna send you the video i did i did a product review of that box okay and i kind of i kind of like took a bunch of people's questions and kind of put it to the test i guess so. You should have like punted it across the yard, <laughs> dude. That thing's pretty stout. Not Did you? See, um, I'm trying to remember who it was. Oh, I remember. You know uh, when Guggen Squad partnered with Bass Mafia, they have like the black and green Bass yeah. Mafia box. Yeah. Did a video and they shot it with a 12 gauge, just to be funny, thinking <laughs> that it was gonna just destroy it, and it actually stopped. Like none of them went all the way through it. Nice. Wow. Like that that's is crazy. Insane. Yeah, but that's crazy. That their box is still with too much to me, in my opinion. But I'm 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 excited to get that. Hopefully get it this weekend. Yeah. Heck yeah. All right, Jimmy, what's well, your next one? We well, used kinda hit on it, man. Uh the jack camera. It's not like I had a couple last year, but last year was more about me trying to prove that the jack camera wasn't the best chatterbait. You like <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> use every other chatter bait you can find to compare and then like this year like all right to hell with it i'm gonna throw the jack camera a lot and i've just gotten a lot of confidence in it and i've never really had confidence in a chatter bait at all and um i don't throw the half inch as much but i throw the three eighths and i really only well i i would say i only throw three colors but I'm, i've been trying to expand on it like i like the spot remover color uh which is kind of a silver with a yellow flash Mm-hmm. Got the yellow flash in it, and then I throw white and chartreuse, black and blue, and then just the solid green pumpkin one. Mm-hmm. And I have the fire craw. It's it looks good, but it only seems to work in a very short window here. Yeah, but you really 
in my opinion, you just can't, you really can't beat that chatterbait right now. And I'm sure somebody will and somebody close. Like I've, I've said it before, we have a local guy here that makes chatterbaits that are pretty phenomenal. The only thing, his will flutter on the way down. Like if you, if you burn it and kill it, mm-hmm. just like the camera does, you can fill the jackhammer more, but his does still do it pretty well. But I don't know. You when you fine tune the jackhammer, like I've got to like into trimming the skirts and playing the trailers mm-hmm. we talked about all year. I've all through the year I've been able to like improve my hookup ratio with it. And I don't know, it's just it's starting to be something that's hard for me to put down. I'm just I'm gaining a lot of confidence in it. Yeah, I was thinking about the chatterbait at work or the jackhammer at work today. And it's almost like it's almost like a finesse version of other chatterbaits. You know what I mean? Like the maybe the, the blade size, is a t- but not what it's yeah. doing. It's no, not, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the the size and the way the blade rattles, it feels like it's a tighter like vibration than other chatterbaits, and then the profile smaller. Right, but it. Uh, I don't know. It, that was just me thinking. I'm being an idiot. You know. No, no, uh, no. I actually, when I was doing all my tackle cleanup and stuff yesterday, and like organizing. I ran across some, I couldn't even tell you the name of the brand that I got at a uh, Gunnersville Tackle Outdoors of these half ounce chatter baits, but the, the blade on them is like that tall, you know, it's like <laughs> almost an inch wide has like two quarter inch holes in it. These yeah. just gaudy giant chatter baits. I've never caught a fish on. And then you look at the, that little bitty jack camera, that little three eighths jack camera costs three times as much, but for some yeah. reason they My- eat that. My biggest thing, dude, was the way that thing comes through cover, like grass. I was yeah. like, "Yeah, it gets out of the grass so good." Yeah. Mm-hmm. I hope they make like an eighth ounce version or something. That'd be awesome. Yeah, well, yeah. I've th- I've thrown it on the river. I let me t- take that back. I've caught three fish on a jackhammer on the river, and that's it. Very first cast with a jackhammer, I caught an eighteen inch smallmouth, and then yeah. nothing for like three months. So many times. I'm like, what the heck's the deal with this? But I guess like smaller fish aren't gonna bite it. Yeah. I don't know. I uh like a lot of the times when it like it's something too. I, I, you can almost make it work mm-hmm. in my like like at Dale Hollow before you know Dustin told us the golden ticket there, like could not find a bite. I started throwing the chatterbait, you know, and I, I was burning it like eight foot deep. I'd let it drop and then just rip it to me. I'd have my rod tip down in the water, trying to keep it down. Caught a fish doing that. Got, uh, you know, get got a couple swipes. When that would die off, I'd slow it down and creep it along the bottom where you could just barely feel it thumping. Or I'd try bringing it up high in the column and ripping it. You could you could just force. It's probably not a pattern. It's still junk fishing, but mm-hmm. they, they just want it, and you can just throw it enough to piss them off. I mean, I caught. I, I don't know if I ever showed you the picture, Brad. I caught a giant crappie on it. Like, yeah, I did too. <laughs> everything eat it. <laughs> like, well, let let me take it back. Your your version of giant crappie is probably way different than my version of giant crappie. <laughs> <laughs> in in Ohio, if you catch a thirteen inch crappie, you're like, holy crap, that's a giant. <laughs> this, this crappie was probably like thirteen to fifteen inch, but I mean, Dudu could have could attest to it. He was right there. That thing probably was like two pounds. Like it was just Jeez, two and a half dude. pounds. Dude, it was huge. That's crazy. Like yeah, it was I... fighting. Like when I, cause I caught it in like 30 foot of water. I, oh. I grabbed over a brush pile, saw a bunch of fish sitting on it, turn around through that uh, jackhammer. Boom. And like I, all the way up to the surface, I was like, dude, this is pretty good bass. <laughs> I mean, for what we had been catching out, this is going to be nice. Yeah. Crappie. I should have kept it. We should have ate it. <laughs> Screw you, Dill Hollow. <laughs> I actually caught my uh, PB this year on a jackhammer back in March. It was like a little over five pounds. Nice. Yeah, it was a good fish for Ohio. I was like, heck yeah. I think all of my big fish but one have come on a frog. Like, typically if I'm catching any kind of, you know, 19-inch, 20-inch plus fish is usually frog mm-hmm. fishing. Yeah, I bet. I believe that. Oh yeah. Well, cool. Okay. That's your third one, right? That's my second. Your second one. All right. Well, I think I came up with a third one, so I'll All go right, ahead and do it. Uh, the ride on trailer I bought back in September, August, something like that. 
Um, yeah. yeah, before that, before that trailer, I had some old like 1960s uh, John Boat trailer. It was uh, green, like sea foam green. <laughs> I ended up like uh, sanding it down and painting it, but uh, I actually I sold that. I fixed it up and I sold it, and then I used that money to buy the galvanized ride on trailer and i've been impressed with it so what i did was i took off the crossbars because i hated those things and actually one of the crossbars got stuck on the side of my garage and bent so i was like screw it threw them away anyway but uh took those off put some unistrut this is where i got an uh, idea from josh because he did it on his microsport uh did the unistrut put some uh pvc bunks on there and then bolted them down into some no spring nuts with a just like a inch bolt or something, I'm guessing. Inch, inch and a quarter, something like that. But, yeah, man, I've been impressed with that trailer. Nice lights. It's good. I mean, I have no complaints about it at all. I like it. I do have plans to put, like, a top rack on it, which there's a rack out there right now that I saw. It was called the Ironton Truck Rack, and it adjusts to different widths, so I can bolt that to the sides of it and have a T rack on the top for another kayak if nice. I need it. But yeah, that's my plans. That's my third one. We're actually doing something like that to, I've got a jet ski trailer and I was going to, I know exactly which rack you're talking about. I was looking at buying that. And then uh, I don't know. I have a buddy that's a fabricator and has like a full machine shop behind his house. And I don't know why I didn't think about it, but I was telling him what I was going to do. I was just going to get him to weld the plates on for me. And he's like, how much is the rack? And I told him and he was like, I could build that rack for like 50 bucks and weld it for you. I'm like, huh? Okay, well, do that then. But yeah. I'm gonna. Do, I saw if you've seen uh, Kate Fields' trailer, uh-huh. water with the sloped mount for her Yakima box. Yeah, I'm gonna do that on one side, but still have a top rack for a second kayak, so I can carry one over the other and then have my Yakima box on the side. That's a good idea. The but one thing I will say we'll though about the I ride got, on trailer, I got tons of other projects too. Yeah, the the one thing I will say about the ride on trailer is something Jay mentioned because I think he has one. He said if you add too much weight to the top, it kind of makes it top heavy, and you want to be careful going on the highway. Yeah, mm. I, I I of course I haven't like had that issue yet because I don't have anything on top. But yeah, I got plans for that. Uh, turn that into something. Uh, I guess the only other thing that I don't I don't like about the trailer, which isn't not a big deal, is I wish it, the tongue was three feet longer. But that's it. There's a lot of trailers out there like that that I don't know why they go with such a short short tongue. I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Right now, I think it's eleven foot, eleven and a half foot, something like that in length. So I, I mean, the kayak like hangs off about two or three feet on the back, but I. I position the bunks uh to hold that weight off the back you know right but overall a great trailer man i i don't have the money to buy like a malone microsport or anything so at 6.99 that you can't beat it it's a good yeah. trailer i feel you mine was free <laughs> there you go josh you, did you sell your trailer uh, I had it for, oh, it's up for sale still, but I never got rid of it, which I'm okay with. So if yeah, I get I another kayak, say. you know, I don't have to worry about it. So yeah. I still have it. I'll probably actually take it. I was thinking about taking it off, uh, marketplace today. So it's, it doesn't look like much. So people are like, you want a thousand dollars for that? And I'm like, dude, that the stuff that I have with it, oh, it was dude. a $1,900, <laughs> you know, like See? kayak trailer. And yeah. I still have all the crossbars and the risers for it. And you know, the thing's got a, a lockable spare. It's got the retractable tongue. Mm-hmm. It's got, um, I just repacked the bearings with marine grease. Like redid that. I have bearing buddies. Like it's wet launchable, you know, and then I just modded it and took everything off. I didn't mess anything up and nothing's broken on it. So, I mean, the thing set up, it, I, it can be set up in, you know, a couple hours to carry yeah. two kayaks, you know, so. But those Malones, man, they hold their value so well and a true kayak angler knows what value that is. So yeah. if, if somebody's saying thousand bucks for that, yeah. that's not the right buy for you, man. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you a trailer that I've got, you know, in my head, I'd love to replicate your buddy Mike's. Josh. Yeah. 
that thing's a beast. Yeah. When he told me what he paid for the the independent suspension axles, yeah, that thing, I I want to I need to get with him and see if I could swap those onto my jet ski trailer. That would be. Can you do that with any trailer? Well, most of the companies that make them, because that's a thing for like overlanding trailers, mm -hmm. they're add-ons. So you take the axle off and you basically just cut off the leaf spring mounts and you weld yeah. plates to the trailer. So okay. it's kind of universal. I just, but he, gotcha. most of them, some of the companies I've seen that make them, they're like a thousand bucks a piece. Yeah. And I want to say he paid just a little over half of that for both of his. Yeah. For both of wow. those. So that, that got me kind of more excited than two grand. Yeah, and his son, his son's a really talented uh, welder. So Mike kind of designed it, and his son helped, you know, help come over and weld it all together. Because they built one for Durban too, Brad. But they built a smaller version of it, um, same type of axle system and stuff like that. So um, you can build if you have the people who know how to do it, and you can build one of those. You can you can build it for. A fairly cheap price now Mike's mm -hmm. is really overbuilt like he'll even say it it's like super overbuilt it's super heavy like picking that thing up is not the easiest thing it's not like you know my trailer where by hand with the kayak on it I'm just right into yeah. the garage up a hill no problem his he's got a uh, um, a trailer dolly for it like we have to move it around it's not the easiest thing it's wide too so you got to be careful like I wonder if that's something I could do to mine eventually, but it's, oh. um, it's cool. It's, um, it, the best part about it is for, you know, big pedal drives. I mean, that thing yeah. is made for big pedal drives. If you got two of them, we put the big rig FD on top of it though. That thing sucked. Doing that sucked. <laughs> like, you know, at the, at, like you're like, and this is with three dudes and you're trying to get it up there and everybody's tired and it just sucked. But the best part was you get out on the boat and you, we both got, um, I don't know, you call them a tow line. It's just rope with a carabiner, right? And we strapped mm -hmm. it to that top bar and you just kick your kayak off and boom, and it just hooks on and, you know, you can just pull it off to the side and pull out. Like, you know, it's just, it's super convenient. That's how Mike thinks though. Like mm -hmm. when he's in kayak fishing or he's gotten his system down to a pat where literally he just pulls up to his garage, hooks up the trailer goes everything's in the boat always like mm -hmm. everything's ready to go it takes him no time to set up he's he grew up in the boat world too like fishing walleye fishing and his dad's been doing it for years so it's like it's in and out off that ramp as fast as you possibly can you know and that's how i like it i, yeah. I do the same i do the same thing i've ran into kayak guys if you do this please stop don't unload your boat on the ramp go park your truck walk back and then load your kayak I hate I know that. it. That's that's the that's, that doesn't even bother me. That's fine. Here, what I can't understand is when somebody unloads their boat and then they're still there unloading the yeah. truck to the kayak. Well, it's just, it's the same thing. They're just like rigging their boat on the ramp and holding the line up. I'm right, like, but their truck is man. still in the way. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> the only time you catch me do that is if the ramp's dead. Yeah. Or yeah. For... There we go. Sorry, I lost you for a second. Yeah, that's the only time you catch me do that. So if the ramp's dead, or like at Del Hollow, like we swarmed the ramp. So we had like seven trucks blocking the ramp at one time. And, the, you know, like 15 of us running boats down to the water. Yeah. But no, I, feel you. I, I can't stand yeah. when someone's there. Well, I, I, I do it exactly like you would like a actual boat. Like I don't, I don't unrig or anything. I go and get my truck back up put pull the kayak on then i'll pull off to the side yeah. and then i'll put my stuff away yeah but yeah i i, I ran yeah. into that problem at a uh, tournament this year and there was like four guys four trucks lined up four trailers and there was one guy with his hobie just sitting there and we we're all waiting for him i was like come on that, dude. that's the reason that i bought a cart like a good cart like that yeah. wilderness cart is what like i can't remember what tournament it was but like i got to the ramp Oh, no, yeah, it was Logan Martin. There were like 30 people there, and it was just crowded. And fighting to get the trailer turned around, back down, mm -hmm. get the gear out, boat, and all that stuff. I was like, no, I'm not doing this again. So now I can just, like, if you pull up to a busy ramp on Gunnersville, I'll, I'll rig everything up in the back of the, in the boat on the trailer, and then just slide it off of the trailer onto the cart and just walk it down there. 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's the good thing about kayak. You don't have to launch at the ramp. No. So, cool. Uh, Josh, what's your final? Or did we already uh, get that? The Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. Um, I fell in love with that bait, fishing deep. Uh, it is small. It doesn't get stuck real easy. Um, it's durable. Um and uh it's super hilarious names that i can't pronounce <laughs> and uh some wild ass colors i still can't fucking figure out either so it's just um it's a crazy cool bait i liked it um it's definitely a good bait for smallmouth because you know they do have small they have small ones that are i think if i remember correctly i found a really small one and i was like dude i can't wait to put this in the river um, you normally don't see this bait. I had to find it, I think, on like Tackle Warehouse or something like that. And I didn't even know that they made them until I started scrolling through the weight options. And I was like, oh, they make like it's I, I want to say it's like a two and three quarter inch size one. And it's only like a one eighth or something like that. Maybe a quarter. I think something it's real quarter. small. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it is a quarter. So I was like, dude, that would be awesome uh in the rivers and stuff so uh definitely i like the bait too because you think of it in a sense almost like finesse fishing but the Mm -hmm. bait those baits have like i don't know they just sink real well they just they get down to the bottom so like i was real comfortable throwing it on like you know medium heavy rods and it just I don't know, man. It it's weird. It's kind of a weird bait. There's a lot of people that swear the fins where the hook comes up and the fins is kind of block, you know, kind of messes with their hook sets. Um, I I couldn't tell you if it did. I am Mike one day he was fishing with him. He was like, I'm cutting those things off, you know. So I, I don't know if it was really that or it's just the way the fish were hitting the bait. Maybe they weren't, you know, picking up the hook. I don't know. I have no idea, but um i really did well with that bait this year so it it was um if i threw a bait this year er, the way it would start out would go wicked willow with a 3.8 kai tech of various colors if that wasn't working then i was like all right i'm gonna stay more on the bottom and i would throw the dark sleeper that was usually my second choice so i'll tell you like you you can say if it was like this for you I've started throwing it in the rivers. Every fish I've caught on it has been textbook, like how you want to hook one up. It's perfectly down their throat, right at the top of the mouth, like dead mm. center every time. Like, yeah. They, and I've only have, I have a few of them. I've only used one of them. And like you said, it's, it was durable. I did snag it up in some current and I actually ripped the lead through the plastic. <laughs> I pushed it back in and then coated it with mend it. And I'm still using it and still catching fish with it. <laughs> nice. Jeez. How big have you thrown them? Like I didn't know that they get up to like one ounce. Mm-hmm. Those? No. Um, I think the heaviest I have is three quarter. So Dang. um and a three quarter I've thrown <clears throat> they you would think like three quarter, you're gonna sink fast. And I've thrown three quarter in like twenty to thirty feet of water, and I'm still amazed at how long it takes to get down. Yeah. And I guess maybe that's from the action of the bait because I think the way it's shaped actually causes it to slow down too. It's not going to just, you know, torpedo straight down to the bottom. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm starting to see a pattern here because every time Josh talks about something or Jimmy talks about something, I'm like, I, I want to try that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys influence me, man. You I should try them, dude. They're it's a good bait. It's not super expensive. I mean, they're pricey, but I mean, not. Well, they're like five bucks. Yeah, I think that would help me learn how to fish deeper. It does. Sure. Well, yeah. in the river, I don't know about the rivers up there because I heard Josh talk about it, and then I watched a, a tactical bassing video on it. It was like ah, I don't know, and uh, the profile of the bait looks like a little sucker fish. Yep. And in the creeks and rivers around here, if you get in clear water, those things are everywhere. And you, you get there at the right time of day, and you'll watch the bass suck them up off the bottom. So that's what hmm. made me kind of decide to throw one. And you throw yours on a spinning gear or bait or casting? 
Um, if I'm throwing the three eighths or above, I'll throw it on casting gear. Yeah, I, I only throw mine on casting. I haven't tried it on spinning yet. Yeah, but it. I mean, obviously, I think if you were throwing a quarter, but I, I'm, I'm not much for throwing things over one eighth with a spinning rod. So if I hit the quarter mark, I'm like, yeah, I can cast that. So. Right. Do you just creep it across the bottom, or have you found other ways to do it? I will do that. Um, I will kind of yo-yo it, like rip it yeah. sometimes. Um, but most of the time, most bites I've gotten, especially it's a really good ledge bait. Because I think like we were mm-hmm. talking about that, it doesn't torpedo straight down. Even when you're fishing it with some weight, like it's like bottom contact, bottom contact. And you know you're about to come to like your drop off. And I've gotten a lot of hits where I know that that's about to occur and it comes right off that ledge. So mm-hmm. and it starts to sink. Heck yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna try some of those. Sounds there cool. we I got lucky. You couldn't find mm-hmm. them, Josh was saying, and then uh <clears throat> Tackle Outdoors opened a new location on the lake. And like that one is like Mega Bass headquarters, so they have everything. I hadn't seen the big sizes they and like you said, I didn't I, I guess I hadn't seen some of the crazy colors that they have. Yeah. But they're pretty wicked. I can't pronounce those uh, names either. <laughs> <laughs> some of them i'm like i don't even know what they're trying to resemble like do they have fish in japan or wherever it's made like you know like that look like that like <laughs> some of them look like koi like yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> or like a kindergarten painted it it's like it picked the most <laughs> random crap <laughs> yeah what, what what you got jimmy Oh, well, I was going to say the paddle and fin trailer, but since you talked about trailers, I picked a different one. But the trailer, it has helped this year. Dude, micro camper, excellent. It makes the trip so much cheaper. But no, the third one I'd say was the uh, Yak Gadget uh, quick anchor system. I Mm. can't remember the name for it right now. But I've got, so with the new canoe, the plate's uh, adjustable to all three boats. So Mm -hmm. I can take it out of the F-12 and then just narrow up the mount and put it in the flint. But I like the ease of use. Like, I don't even have, like, I don't have it on my anchor wizard or anything. I just got a, uh, I took a one-inch round ball and just screwed it into the track. I tied a double overhand knot in the paracord that I've got running to it. And I just, when it's up, I hook it onto the, that one-inch ball. And I pop it off and just let it, you know, do its thing when it's in the water. But it, it, I had a little bit of like a learning curve with it because Mm it, the, the anchor stakes I've had before are pointed and his isn't. So, uh, me and him Mm -hmm. talked and he gave me some like lead weight, a lead weighted collar to try to add to it. And that helped. That was my idea, by the way. Was it really? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He, he had. Like it, he has, he isn't making them yet, but he took like lead wheel weights and he like smelted them up, <laughs> stuck it in there, pulled it back out to the right size and was like, here, try these and see if it works. And then it, it does. It works yeah. good. Um, but yeah, no, it, I used it a lot when I was in lacrosse and it was just really nice to be cruising down the creek and then just pull the rope up and it you know, stake you out. Uh, I'd like to double it up with uh, my first flint had the anchor wizard mount on the front. Mm-hmm. I would like to put that back on my flint now. That way you can really hold yourself perfect, you know, anchor in the front, pole in the back. But it's just, it, it's so much better than a power pole to me. Mm-hmm. There's just so many downfalls to the power pole. Like, like Dan, Dan had one and Dan said that the time he owned his, it was at power pole being fixed more than he had it. Like, huh. I don't want that. Yeah. And then I've got buddies that's got horror stories of them, like the lock coming undone and it like folding up and smacking them in the head and getting stuck in the down position out in the middle of the marsh, red fishing. And it's just, and they're so expensive. Yeah. But that, no, his, that, that anchor, it's, I really like it. It, you know, everybody's heard of the Bernie's River Stick. I think it's Bernie's. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that thing works. 
it just looks really redneck. Which I'm, <laughs> that's okay. But uh, I like the, you know, one, like with the, the mount that John has, you know, they're all a little different. So, like you can add track mounted stuff to it yeah. because it's lots and holes and you can stick T-bolts through it. Yep. So like I lost the spot to put my boom pole for my camera, but it actually worked out better because now it's on top of that mount. And it's up a little higher, so it gave me a little bit better, you know, vantage That's points. Yeah. Point. That's but a good idea. It's, it's pretty cool. It's definitely yeah. helped. I'm a big fan of it because I was like, the Kilroy having the gear tracks in the back like that, along that, that flat, you know, kind of sort of covered area, dude, it, it's just perfect for it. I was like, dude, it's almost like the Kilroy was made for that. Because I remember when he was making those, and I hadn't seen the adjustable Y, and I was like, all right, well, he's got the the version with the, you know, micro anchor, like, you know, plate for, you know, four bolt plate system. And then I was like, but man, you know, you buy that and say you want a different kayak and it doesn't have that or whatever. And then they made the the one, I think you're talking about the adjustable Y plate one. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I can change this into any kayak. It doesn't matter like that. And it's, right. you know, what is 170 bucks, something like that. And I'm like, you don't have to worry about batteries. You don't have to worry about like like some of the horror stories where because I've heard about the battery themselves like having issues like with the way they're on there that they fall off, you know the mm -hmm. micro anchor like Mike was one of the guys I think he talked about his folding over and hitting him in the shoulder, um, hmm. you know and then it's, you're looking at a thousand dollar piece of equipment on, on top of everything else that we put so it was just yeah. it's a definitely a nice nice thing and it's kind of cool because you can customize it to work you know however you kind of want to you're not doing anything like that to your micro power pole you know no granted no. i've used a micro power pole and i love the thing but like i'm like also don't want to drop a thousand dollars on a shallow water anchor system you know when that thousand dollars could go to rods or reels mm -hmm. or yeah you know fish finder even you know think about the kind of fish finder you can get for a grand you know Heck yeah dude. <laughs> big <laughs> so, nine nine inch screen that's what yeah. i'm running that's that that could probably be like my <laughs> run up is my nine inch raymarine element like had a hummingbird seven you know, everybody talked really good about Humminbird. I could not stand that every time I changed body of water that you had to go in adjusting everything. And, yeah. you know, I'd finally get it dialed in on a body of water and then you go fish somewhere else. <laughs> the the element, you get in yeah. the water, you turn it on and the clarity and the quality of the screens just just where you want it. Like, I'm still figuring out the um, 3D vision on it. Mm-hmm which it's, it's really cool. I mean, like, you can definitely go over and be like, okay, that's a rock pile. But I've seen guys, you know, that can tell by looking at their 3D imaging that that's a car, you know, that's a tire. Yeah. So yeah. I mess with the settings on that a little more. But I've with that unit this year, I've been able to actually, like, target fish better. Yeah. Uh, just understanding the side image a little bit more. That's helped a lot. I didn't have side imaging on my Humminbird. But, like, have your... You know, I'll have my chirp down and side on. You see it on down. You can tell where it is left to right with side imaging. I mean, it's it's just like they say, it's video game fishing at that point. Like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've heard good things about Ray Marine, and I've actually heard people compare it to Humminbird before. My, my thing is, Ray Marine is a, like a, like you see them on all the big charter boats, sailboats. Yeah offshore fishing boats like ray marine is the company that does all that stuff like mm -hmm. here a little known fact is ray marine is the um company that was they <clears throat> used to find the titanic on the sonar and then more recently they had one of the crab fishing boats like you see on deadliest catch go down and they used dual 3d ray marine axiom mm -hmm. and they found the boat by crossing them and it drew the basically drew the picture and that's were, awesome like, you could like they they have it on their well, i think it's on their website or it may have been on the discovery channel's website but they had a picture of the 3d image drawn by the unit and you could tell it was a crab boat with crab pots still strapped to it wow and, and that's at you know a few hundred feet yeah wow ray marine's good stuff 
Oh, yeah. I believe it. I hear good things, like I said. Almost went with one I should have. What do you have? Garmin Echo Map 73. Gar- Garmin's are so nice. Like, it is nice. I like it. I'm just, I can't remember what their, their Mac Daddy, like the DS9 or something like that. They're, I don't know. they're awesome, I, though. I don't, I don't know what the high-end uh, models are. I only know what I can afford. <laughs> I just need a giant screen. Like I'm about to like try to turn like a 30 inch television into because I'm so blind. Like I'm like, what is that? Like, you know, I'm like, and it's obvious, like a a boat. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I saw a kayak one time at St. Clair, and I'm like, took me forever to realize what it was because my vision's so bad. Like so. <laughs> Because I just get tired of having, I'd like to have everything up and be able to see it good. And I can't yeah. stand to have to flip flop back. So either A, it's like stick with a seven or a nine and get touch screen to where it's easier, or get a 24 inch monitor across the front of the kayak and just call it <laughs> quits. Go big, like uh, Scott Martin's got the new, uh, I can't remember what he uses. He showed them in his flats boat, but he's got dual 22 inch. Does he? In graphs. He's a Garmin guy. Yeah, he Garmin. has Pantopics and stuff. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's got dual 22s on his marsh boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you, if you guys wait a few years, uh, the prices of some of these big models will go down. See, you, you'll be getting like 10-inch screens for 500 bucks in a few years, I bet. I don't know, oh, man. Yeah. I still see like the mm. Humminbird 883. Mm. 1995 guys still want a thousand dollars for them. Yeah. Jeez. I, I remember when <laughs> your shit's outdated. <laughs> yeah. I remember when down imaging came out and it was like up there, you know, like 600 bucks and stuff. That's what it's I a, want to see is the real imaging and stuff like that, like mm-hmm. Panoptics 3D vision. I'm ready to see that technology get cheaper where the companies can offer it on more units for better yeah. prices. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we'll see some price dropping i saw saw a a guy i I think he was local he's selling a 2020 pa 360 14 with pan optics and everything and he was like that's a 3600 dollars graph setup he was asking nine thousand dollars for that whole boat that's crazy no thanks no (laughs) that's what everybody was just making fun they were like you'll get six at most yeah man yeah that sucks well, the thing is, is don't like he could probably get it. Just don't put it all together like that. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like separate it all. Yeah. <laughs> it, I, I talked to Jimmy about this a few months ago, actually selling a boat as a complete package. It's it's a lot harder than piecing it out. I know it's going to suck to sell things separately, but you're you're going to get your money that you want to get out of it if you piece it out. Yeah. Well, that was like when I was selling the big rig, everybody kept asking me, like, the first question wasn't anything about the boat. It had nothing to do with the kayak. They're like, what comes with it? And I'm like, nothing, dude. The seat, the drive. Like, it's, <laughs> you're not, you know, that, I mean, I even took pictures. I took pictures, like, of the boat without stuff on it because I knew that was going to happen. And everybody yeah. expects that they're getting a PFD and a paddle. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, no, dude, I still no, do this. <laughs> it's my. You- <laughs> when you go to a kayak shop, you don't get the PFD and the paddle with the kayak. Yeah. I mean, That's unless you're I... buying it like that. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to buy it. a special, but yeah, for the most people, part. People got too used to getting deals on Craigslist, man. Yeah. I used yeah. to get list king, and it, you can see the people that are, you know, they're just trying to get a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, I get it. Like, but it was just funny because I never got like, "Hey, what my, what year is the boat?" or "What drive system is in that?" It was, "What else comes with it? What accessories come with it?" <laughs> Normally, I get when I sell a boat, it's does the trailer come with it? <laughs> yeah, thousand dollar boat for eight hundred dollars. Yeah, the trailer comes too. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool, man. That was a good episode. Yeah, I had fun. I thought we were. I thought we were gonna cut you know cut short on time or something but we actually went over three of us blabbing (laughs) out fishing if you need an episode for next week we could talk about the three things that we're looking forward to using (laughs) or we talk about the three things we dislike the most 
That would hey, be a good one too. We're gonna need to do like five things. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, hey, I well, disliked Brad, I disliked Ryan, and I dislike <laughs> no. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> you know what? I'm I'm used to it. I'm used to having people hate me, so it's all good. I dislike that Brian's a weenie. I dislike that Brad didn't show up to Del Hollow because he's a punk. I know, dude. I suck. You missed so much gold. Yeah. Uh, I should have came down there. Even if I was going to get down there at like one in the morning, I should have still came. You would have, if you, if you'd got down there at one on Friday, you would have got there at the absolute most perfect time. (laughs) You would have pulled up to see Ryan laid out on the deck. Yeah. (laughs) That's hilarious. All right, Brad, you want to take us out, buddy? Yeah. Where are we going? We're going out, bro. Wherever you want, man. Night on the town. Sounds good. Well, hey, if you guys want to do the dislikes episode next week, let's do it. So. <laughs> right, and our listeners, let us know. Do you think a dislike episode is a good idea or not? Uh, yeah, I got... It might be a bad idea. <laughs> thinking about it right now. Yeah, if, if you listen to this, comment in the show post when we post this on Thursday. If you want us to hear a dislike episode next week. <laughs> We'll read it. So, all right, man. Good times, guys. Thanks for coming on. All right. See you, dude. Have a good one. Peace. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle in Finn. Don't forget to go check out our website at paddle, the letter N, and fin.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle and Finn. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Finn on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler. The Angler button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures, located in Northern Illinois, for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. TRC Covers, protect your investment. Catch Products, shout out to Catch Products. Go to catchproducts.com and put the Paddle in Fin logo directly on your catch board. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com, use promo code PNF20 and save 20% on all your jig and tackle needs. 